I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master. Go to QuantrixAuthority.com to learn more. Hey, welcome back to another netcast. I'm Rich Lopez, Quantrix Authority. I sincerely appreciate you joining me today for episode number 294, where I'm going to show you how to calculate the number of days in a month. This is in response to a question sent to me by Andreas. Andreas has a matrix with year and month, and he wants to know how many days are in each one of these months. The way I would do this is I would go out and I would say, well, this is equal to uh, days in month. Our days per month is equal to the end of month calculation. What this does is it goes out and calculates the last day of the month. So I would say, well, my, my start date is going to be uh, a date, and that is going to be the year, and it's going to be the year I'm at. And so I'm going to say at year, like so. And the month is going to be the month I'm at, but because month is stored as a text here, I'm actually going to use a hashtag, and I'm going to just use the index of the month, okay? So I'm going to say index of the month with the hashtag of month, and then my day is going to be uh, the first day of the month, and that gives me a date. And then how many end of months... Uh, do I want to be out? Well, I don't want to be out any, so I'm going to put zero, and that's going to calculate the end of the month for the given day. But as you can see, I have a pound value error that then takes place, and if I use my dependency inspector, the, year why, the reason why this is happening is because my date is not evaluating correctly. The state function is not evaluating correctly. And that is because I know that this year, this at year, is actually coming back as a string. Because any uh, items in Quantrix, they are stored as strings. So I need to convert this at year to a value, like so, by wrapping it in a value. Okay. Now I get some convoluted day. This is actually the 42nd thousand, 35th day from, I believe it's 1-1 of 1900. But if I were to change this format then to a date, okay, I would see that this is 131 of 15, this is 228 of 15, and so on. So indeed, it is the last day of the month, and that is what I would expect using this end of month function with a parameter of zero. Well, I want to count how many days there are, so I would simply go in here, and I would use the text function, and I would put all this in the text function. I would say, well, the text of that and my format of my text is going to be actually DD for just day day. And when I do that, then what happens is it brings back the number of days in the month as text. Okay, so if this needed to be a value, then maybe what I would do is I would go ahead and I would wrap all of this into a value, okay? and then I would convert this to, uh, I guess, a numeric format by using the accounting format, I guess, and then you can see that indeed this gives me the number of days per month on total. I would probably go ahead and I would skip the total on this formula, or that may need to be a summary item, and I'd have a summary item uh, formula uh, to calculate total. Anyway, let's see actually if that adds up to being 365 days. Let's just see if we're that lucky. One second. And indeed it does. 365, when was our last leap year? Was 2016 a leap year? It looks like it was. So that should have 366 days, and indeed it does. So how do you get the number of days in a month? Uh, I would use the end of month date value. Um, an index, uh, text, and then value again. That's how I would do it. If you have any questions about Quantrix, I hope that you'll reach out to me. I hope that you'll follow Andreas's example and reach out to me with your question at quantrixauthority at gmail.com. I absolutely love Quantrix. I want to make you a Quantrix master. So I do hope that you will join me again for another episode of Quantrix Authority with Rich Lopez. <laughs>
Today's podcast is brought to you by QuantricsAuthority.com. I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master.